Diversity is the law of nature. From around 5400 mammal species to over 900,000 types of insects. The variety that exists in the world is just mind-boggling. We human beings have been thriving on earth since millions of years, altering the environment around us to make it more comfortable and suited to our liking. Nature has been manipulated to a great extent, creating problems that no one could have possibly foreseen. One such case is that of invasive species. Feral pigeons have been derived from the domestic rock pigeons that were released into the wild. Lovable and pretty as they might seem, they pose a great threat to the other native birds. Hailing from the high rocky mountains of Western and Southern Europe, North Africa and South Asia, the concrete buildings and towering structures of urban cities provide a perfect nesting condition for these birds. Having swift fly and adaptable diet, these pigeons give a stiff competition for food and shelter to such an extent that birds like sparrows are now rare in most cities. That is not all though. Pigeons are transmitters and carriers of Trichomonas gallinae, a protozoan causing canker in these birds. This disease is then spread to the wild duck species as well as raptors preying on them. Apart from this, many rodents and pests are attracted to areas using to feed pigeons, further propagating the spread of various other diseases. Manual, which, uh, pigeons are uh, uh, highly Recently in Bangalore, a lot of people are feeding pigeons in public places like Lanka and Amalpa. It is a very, 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 very uh, destructive practice because pigeons are birds which are mostly cannibals. They feed on grains. And when pigeon number increases, the species of birds like the sparrows, the small birds which were once available in plenty in Bangalore are all disappearing because they are connecting with pigeon for the same source. Not only that, pigeons are spreading many diseases like uh, even sexually transmitted disease, bacteria meant for that is being transmitted to the fecal matter of the pigeons. While pigeons pose a threat to an area's biodiversity, another problem that is rarely ever highlighted exists in front of our eyes, guised as a wonderful solution to environmental problems. This is the problem of monoculturing. Turahali Forest is a dry and deciduous forest located about 20 kilometers off Kanakpura Road in Bangalore. What was initially taken up as a project to provide firewood and timberwood to the rapidly growing population turned out into a bane for the same land, monoculturing. Monoculturing of eucalyptus and acacia trees squeezed the nearby lands of its rich minerals. Eucalyptus being extremely dependent on water was depleting the water table, leaving the land barren. It also decreased the annual rainfall in the region. This problem came into spotlight after the government faced pressure from the farmers and general public. This is Turahali a small patch of greenery in the middle of a crowded city. This acacia tree is a part of hundreds of such trees planted here. This forest is a perfect example of monoculturing in India. Eucalyptus and acacia make up the majority of trees here, which has severely affected the water table and soil nutritional content here. Monocultured forests are similarly a great problem in many places destroying the native species and therefore the biodiversity depending on them. 
insects and birds feeding on a specific plant perish with its death cutting down large patches of natural forests and replacing them with commercially imported trees might increase the green cover on paper but does it really help these are the eucalyptus trees responsible for the depletion of the water table in the forest Monoculture is the practice of planting only one type of vegetation, and this program came to India as a part of the social forestry, which was started by the government of India's forest department. I think in the 1980s, the forest department wanted to supply saplings to the common people, to the school children, and all other NGOs who are always working in the field of forestry. And in this, most often they were supplying only the supplies of uh, eucalyptus, silver oak trees, and even the acacia trees. I think when you visited the Thoragalli forest, mostly you might have come across only the eucalyptus and uh, and the acacia trees. Both the trees have its own problem. Acacia is mostly highly absorbing the ground water. and acacias pollen grains are very dangerous to people when they when it is inhaled it will result in many of the respiratory problems like hay fever upper respiratory tract infections asthma people who are affected with such a respiratory problems will be severely affected in that particular season of flowering of those trees is it justified to exploit the resources and change the topography of a region and introduce new species according to what we consider beneficial think again what if 